All right, Hutch, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show, bro. How you doing? How you doing? Man, just another day, bro. You know, just hanging out, streaming and doing whatever RP is. RP is. How you been, though? <laughs> How you been? What's new with you? Man, I've been good, dude. Um, just getting back into it. You know, I I've uh, I do a lot of variety streaming, so getting back into RP is always different, weird, man, because, you know, it's the RP space, <laughs> but... It's, you know, it's all right. It's it's going, it's going pretty good. So, you know, kind of, um you know, how we normally do this, you know, we we go back because, you know, there's a lot of, you know, 3.0 viewers and even 2.0 viewers, whatever, that don't know the original story on how, you know, they, they kind of just see the success and they're just mm. like, oh, okay, Hutch, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they didn't see Hutch when there was nothing, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we kind of want to go into your story and how, how you started even before even no pixel like what was you doing prior and what made you start streaming so i guess i would go into what was you doing prior to no pixel so uh i actually i've told the story a bunch so when I, I i played professional baseball i played for the new york mets for six years and then chicago white Sox for a year wow um and a lot of people didn't know that whenever i first touched no pixel uh, I didn't tell anybody, yeah. but even farther back than that, I started streaming on Twitch in 2012. 2012 I was okay. uh, I was 13. I was playing World of Warcraft, Cataclysm. Yeah, and I would carry people. <laughs> Listen, I don't. I wasn't the best businessman, okay, at all. But I would I would carry people in two v two arenas, and then pay them gold after I was carrying them to follow my stream. <laughs> so they would they take my fucking money and then they would just unfollow me after Man. after they took my gold so you know i abandoned that that business model pretty quickly but um but yeah so i uh i was in i was in professional baseball and uh i me and summit played together uh summit 1g we played together in Fortnite when it first came out in season one Okay, well, wait, wait, and, you skip, you're skipping a lot. You said, you just, okay. you just said, okay. I jumped, I jumped. Okay, so there's two major things you just, oh, I, I played major baseball, but yeah, anyways. <laughs> all right, so, and then you said, hey, I played with Summit 1G, but anyways. All right, so. Okay, all right, I'll try, yeah. Let's let's go back to the baseball. So Okay. What, like, okay. Okay, so we got to go back. So I guess growing <laughs> up, you, you, was, you was into baseball. Yeah, so growing up, I uh, I played I played sports my my entire life. I fucking hated sports. Mm. Like even like today, like don't get me wrong, I'll sit down, I'll watch a football game, I play football, I know what's going on. I'll watch a baseball game, I'll drink a beer, get fucked up, I'll enjoy it, you know. Um, but like when I think of a good day, like I'm not thinking of sports other than like I I like professional fighting, boxing, MMA stuff like that. That I truly enjoy. But everything else, I I've never really been into. Yeah. And um, my dad was a, just a fucking, he just, all he wanted me to do was sports all the time. He That's all he cared about was sports, 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 sports. So he pushed me towards it. So my dad is 5'10", 5'11". Mm -hmm. My mom is 5'4", five 5'5". Foot five foot five. I'm 6'8". Jesus. So there was a milkman somewhere, all right? Yeah. Stopped by my mama's house <laughs> at some say, point. He said Listen. there was a milkman. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad recognized that his son was a very large individual, and he just was like, "I, we were going to make you a beast. So yeah. the whole training regiment and everything, my entire life was sports. Um, I got into high school, started getting offers. Uh, at one point, I think in total, I had over forty three offers from Jeez. all major D ones. So this this was in high school. In high school, yeah. So so, so how how was you? So let's kind of like what type of work was you putting in at that time? Like, so I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and say I I fucking worked my ass off. I really didn't. Like, you just not it was not. I was I was gifted. Now, if I would have worked as much as as much as I know now as an adult, if I would have worked back then. Man, I don't know where I'd be. I'd probably I'd probably be flying around with space boots or some shit. I would have been so damn good. But yeah. I was it, it all came naturally, man. Like when I was 6'8", I was athletic, I could throw hard. Um I could hit I could hit the ball as far as I could fucking imagine hitting it. 
Um, and my sophomore year in high school, I was ranked fourth in the nation overall for hitting. Um, and everything was on the up and up, bro. And I was like, dude, this is, this is crazy. My sophomore year, I committed to the University of Kentucky. Um, and I was, that's originally where I'm from. Um, so I'm like, dude, this is perfect. Like, this is, this is my calling, right? So I'm, I'm going and I'm, I'm at like this camp and I'm, I'm doing like this hitting camp. And uh, I swing and I feel a crunch in my hand. I'm like, ah, fuck. Um, but I'm stubborn. So I grab the bat again. I go to swing again and I couldn't hold it. So I taped my hands to my bat so I could still hold on to it. Jeez. And I broke what's called a hamate bone. Might be able to show it to the camera. You see the scars on the palm? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I broke a hamate bone. It's called the hook of the hamate. It's a completely useless bone. Um, your hand literally doesn't even use it anymore. Scientists think that we evolved somehow, just like, you know, your sesamoid bones in your feet. Like, the bones are just useless. They just sit there. So I snapped that sucker and uh, broke it, like, four different ways. Um, and I lost all the feeling in my left hand whenever they did surgery. So I couldn't hit anymore. So all my dreams came fucking crashing down. And I was like, God, I was, like, the best. And now I can't even hit. You know, this is terrible. And uh, I stepped on the mound one day and... 97 just came out my hand and i was like okay i can pitch now so that's just how like when it came to to baseball i was just athletically just gifted yeah. i played football i was athletically gifted it, it just you know i was really lucky so now so now you're in high, you're in high school you said you got you had 42 offers around there yeah it was somewhere between like 40 to 45 offers from anywhere that wasn't <laughs> Anywhere that did you didn't need to be smart to go there, I got an offer from. Okay, <laughs> like Vanderbilt, they ain't fucking hit me up, bro. So, <laughs> you know. So at this point in time, how how are you feeling? Like, are, are you understanding what's going on? Do you understand, or is just like ah, that's whatever? Like, how are you feeling mentally? So, like I said, my dad was always, you know, when it comes to sports, man, my dad was. He was ruthless. Like, don't get me wrong. I love my dad. He's an awesome guy. But he was fucking ruthless. Like, I would, I'd come home, you know, after I got ranked fourth in the nation. Fourth in the nation, or sixth, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting it wrong. I was sixth in the nation, number two overall for first basemen and hitters. But the other, the people who were ranked above me were all pitchers, and uh, they didn't hit. And I, I came home, and I, we, you know, I was pumped. I was like, oh, I'm sixth in the nation. Let's, let's fucking go. And my dad's like, why are you excited? That means there's five more people that are better than you. It's time to get to work. Dude, so I'm dude. sitting here as a kid and I'm yeah. like, damn, I suck. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, like that's, yeah. I'm not even that good. So I, it just went to, you know, where I was just trying to get better every day. And then when I, after I broke my hand, trying to learn how to become, you know, something literally completely different than what I was already doing, you know, it was it was the hardest thing. So to I mean, to touch on the like the parent thing without getting too mm -hmm. too personal, um, yep. you know, do you feel like? Did you feel? Do you feel like because your dad was like an hard ass, and mm. he didn't kind of like, you know, congratulate you for you know these huge achievements? Did you feel like that has made you? better person or that kind of affected you in some parts of your life i think um i think it's a it's a it's a, it's it's one of those things where you it's it's a win and a loss right because i wouldn't change anything about like all the like don't get me wrong like there's been some moments where he said some shit i'll give you an example you know we have an open book yeah uh senior year all right I know that I'm probably going to get drafted and whatever. Um, we're in the, the state semifinals. My dad was my head coach my senior year. Um, so I'm on the mound. I'm pitching. And my arm is its just dead, bro. I didn't know at the time, but I tore my... Um, it's called the UCL. It's the owner collateral ligament. Yeah, yeah. It sits in your elbow. I tore that. Jesus. And that's why I couldn't feel... I couldn't really feel the ball coming out my hand that day. Um, so I'm on the mound and I can't hardly throw. And it hurts every single throw. And I told, you know, my pitching coach who my dad was on business trip at the time. I told my pitching coach, I'm like, dude, I can't feel it. He's like, this is your time. 
this is your moment. You know what I mean? You yeah, got yeah. this. Yeah. I went out there and I fucking sucked, bro. I blew the whole game. Yeah, they yeah. scored six in the first. Like, we were done. We were done. Uh, I lost this game. It was terrible. I went like 0 for 4 at the plate too. Like, because even though I can't feel my hand, I, I still would hit. And I was just terrible at hitting. I would literally hit home runs with one hand because I couldn't grab the bat with my bottom hand. So I would just like, I'd it'd be in my hand. But whenever I'd swing, I'd just, like it was like I'm punching the undercutting the baseball. It was weird, yeah, yeah. hard to explain. Um, so after I get done, dude, my high school career is over. Four years. I mean, if you ever played sports, you know that when your high school career is over, it's it's hard to, to like deal with, right? Because you're going on to more things. I look at my phone and my dad texted me, "You fucking blew it. Good job." <laughs> and wow. So that yeah. kind of shit was like, like like when I got that, I was like, "You motherfucker." Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? No, for sure, for sure. And even in today's, like, he's, he regrets it. He's a hothead like me. I mean, you know me. Even in character, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> fucking hothead. So I can understand it. But at the same time, if it wasn't for him being like that, I would have never played sports. I would have never got to experience and, or be able to tell people for the rest of my life I was a professional athlete at one yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I would have never, I would have never done any of it. So, so, so it was, uh, like you said, it was a, uh... There was some shitty parts, but it was overall just a good thing. Like exactly when it comes, I to needed it. Yeah, you needed it. Like that push. Yeah. It was. It was like tough love. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, uh so we're at the high school point now. Bunch, mm. uh, a bunch of a bunch of schools want you. So what do you what do you do from there now? So I initially committed to University of Kentucky. Um, at the time, uh, when it came to sports, seventy percent was like a full ride for baseball. So between an entire team of 40 athletes on a professional or on a, a collegiate baseball team, they get 11.7 scholarships or 11.3 then. So they have to take 11. So basically, let's say full ride, everything paid for, every book, every chip that you eat, no matter what you do, is it is paid for by the college. They get 11 of those and they have to split it amongst 40 players. Okay. So they'll take like, Okay, you get 30% of one scholarship. Another guy gets 20% oh, excuse I got you, me, of I that got scholarship. Yeah, yeah. Another guy gets another 15% of that scholarship. So the easiest way to think about it is, is they have $150,000 and they have to spread it amongst 40 guys. Yeah, okay, Some people yeah. will get, uh, you know, the top guys will get 50,000 of that. Some guys won't get any money and they'll have to pay for everything themselves, gotcha. depending on your skill level. That's yeah, how they do it. Yeah. So as a, a sophomore in high school, I got six or... Yeah, it was sixty percent offer Jeez. for uh for you know University of Kentucky. And at the time, that was unheard of. You know, I grew up in the sticks. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and no one. I mean, dude, going to University of Kentucky was like my biggest fucking dream ever. That's huge. So I was like, yeah. yeah, exactly. So I was like, dude, I'm I'm gonna do it. So I commit to UK. Um, fast forward a year, my junior year. Uh, I get a call from a news journalist in, in Kentucky and they're like, did you hear about coach Henderson? He's leaving. Coach Henderson's the head coach. He was there for over 10 years of UK of UK. Yeah. That's who recruited me. That's who got me there. Whole nine yards. Yeah. And they're like, did you hear he's leaving? And the entire coaching staff is going to get fired. And I was like, Oh no. So me and my dad sat down. Henderson calls me. He lets me know he's leaving. He was basically effectively fired and all this and the other shit. So I decommit from Kentucky. And that's that was the moment where every school that you could fucking think of, mail in the letter, mail in the lever, ma mail in the letter, mail in the yeah, letter. Yeah. And it was so dope. And it's not, I hope people don't think I'm being cocky. No, no, this is. But a, it was is... just, it was one of the coolest moments of my life. Because I would walk into school, no bullshit. I would walk into school. I'd sit down in first period. And the principal or one of the, uh, the guidance counselors, usually the principal did it. He was awesome. He loved me and I loved him. He would walk into the room with a bundle of letters like this thick. And he would drop it on the table. And he was like, let me know which one you pick. And he would walk out. Jeez. And then the next day, he'd walk in with another bundle of letters. And it was like... Non All the kids, yeah, nonstop. It was so cool for me because I'd open them up and my entire class would look and we would all like look at the letters that I got from each school. And it was one of like, I felt like a fucking baller, bro. Like, yeah, hell <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Hell yeah. 
So it, it felt it was so cool for me because, you know, but previously in my I skipped a lot of stuff like previously in my life, I got really I got bullied a lot in middle school. I got expelled from middle school, actually. Like I I always got bullied and, and picked on because I was the big teddy bear that everyone fucked with. Yeah. And now I went to another portion of my life where everybody thought I was the cool kid now. I'm, like I'm the, the man. Cool I'm guy. the man. I'm yeah. the man. Yeah. So it was cool, man. Yeah. And uh and then, um, yeah, so I get all these offers. Um, Mississippi State, that's the big dog. When, yeah. it comes to, when it comes to baseball, Mississippi State, a lot of schools are predominantly either basketball or football. Yeah. And baseball is a secondary or a third sport that's, like, followed by the school. Mississippi State is baseball. Like, that is the only thing they care about. They care about football. They'll still go there. But baseball season, that's the shit. Um, so I went there, went on my official visit, partied my ass off. <laughs> it was fucking fun. And uh, by draft day, they ended up giving me, it was an 85% scholarship. It was the highest they've ever given. Jeez. So yeah. you went from 60 to an 85. 85. Well, the, the so initially it was 75. Um and then the same shit happened. The head coach, three days before I signed my letter of intent, which is the letter that you sign before you go to go to school, he took the AD job at the school, which is the athletic director's position. He gets yeah. paid more money, but he's no longer the head coach. And he told me he wasn't going to do that. So my agent, I had an agent at this point. My agent was like, you need to ask for more scholarship or we'll, we'll just go to LSU. So I told him, I said, listen, man, I'm going to need more scholarship. And that's when they gave me 85%. Yo, so this effectively is, a full ride. This is definitely, uh, you could write a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like a, a bipolar, uh, what's it? A biography? Yeah, yeah, like, yo, this is like a, this is like some movie shit. I feel like when, <laughs> I, when you're telling me this, I'm like picturing like, like, so at this point, everything's just on the high. Like you're big dogging. Bro, it was, I was, uh, man, it was one of the fucking coolest things in the world, bro. It was fucking dope. I was on a I was on a high. Holy. So you're yeah. you're 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 you got an eighty five now. Yep. Um so how long was you there for? Didn't. What? I turned it all down. Yeah. So you got so, the offer and you turned it down. No no no. So I, I this this is where baseball gets confusing. Okay. All right? All right. So I get offered the eighty five, say yes, sign my letter. Yeah. In baseball, you have a choice. When draft day comes, you either take the money and go play professionally or you go to college. So just because I signed the letter of intent to go to go to school doesn't mean I have to go. I can opt out and take my draft money. Wow. And back then, you didn't get Scott, you didn't you didn't get paid by sponsors in college. Now you can. Now I mean you've probably I don't know if you heard about it, but in in the US now. If you go to school, you can get sponsored by companies. There's motherfuckers in college making millions yeah. of dollars by sponsors. And that wasn't a thing. So for me, um, I mean, bro, I wanted the bread. I yeah, mean, come yeah. on no, now. No, no, no. I get it. I get it. So I get it. Senior day or senior year comes. I did okay. I was projected projected to go in the first round, as you heard, tore my my owner collateral ligament. Yeah. Tried to keep it under the radar, bro. I tried to not let anybody know. But when a guy who throws 97 is throwing 91, 92, all the scouts knew I tore my shit. Everybody knew I was messed up. Damn. So I get offered, um, I got drafted six times. And by getting drafted six times, that means you get calls. So I got called six times, I should say, um, by everyone trying to fucking pay me pennies. So they would like, and by pennies in, in professional baseball, the lowest they can offer you as a high school guy is 125000 yeah. Which sounds like a lot, but that's for like your entire career. You're going to make that money to help you get to the big leagues. Okay. Which that's a whole another story. It'd take me hours to explain it. But long story short, I got drafted by the Mets for 360K and I took it and didn't go to college. Sick, sick. So that's a big move. 360K is huge. It is like the amount of money is good. And, and I'm not trying to underplay how much 360,000. I understand that's a lot of money. Yeah. But at the same time, in the in in the minor leagues, you get paid eleven thousand dollars a year. Eleven thousand entire year. year. Yeah. Eleven thousand a year. That does not include having to 
pay for your own apartment, having to pay for your own food, all this and the other shit. You got to pay for all that. And on top of that, you're traveling all the time. So it's like you're paying three meals a day, fast food. That shit adds up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you don't make any money. So you take 360K, take the taxes, 280K is what yeah. I got actually paid. Divide that by six or seven. That's how much I got paid. So that would be a year. I made 60K a year. That's what I got paid. 60K a year. 60K a year for the six years I got there. And like, because all that is, is it's money for you to live off of before you get to the big leagues. And so, so what is, well, it, is it? Would you like it saying like this, this is your, this is your development money type shit? Exactly. Yeah. This is your let's. This is your money to invest in yourself, put yourself in training, do shit like that, whatever. For me, it was the money to go and fucking blow <laughs> as fast as that shit can leave yeah. my wallet, bro. Yeah, come for on, real, man. For real. <laughs> you already knew I yeah. toasted that yeah. shit as fast as possible. Yeah. Damn, man, I was so, going wild. So now you took the you took basically you took the deal. So yeah. What's what's ha what's happening after that? So I, I get drafted, took the money, walk in, bro. I see all my idols, like all these motherfuckers that I I idolized yeah. growing up. You know, Jacob Degrom, Noah Syndergaard, Tim Tebow, fucking Matt Harvey, all these dudes because all of them were injured at the time in 2017. They're all just standing there, and I'm like, dude, I was just watching you on TV yeah. yesterday, and you're in front of me. I'm a 17-year-old kid looking at my idols who are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. This is fucking crazy. I was, I was shell-shocked. I was shell-shocked. Yeah, hell yeah. So I walk in, bro, and, the, and it, it all happened so fast. I told this story on stream the other day. I walk in, I work out, come back out. It's time to, I got to take a shower. I walk in the shower. Man, I ain't never showered with another man before, but it's group showering time. Yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like, it's time to group shower. And I'm like, shit. So me not knowing shower etiquette, I thought the other side of the shower, because they were all standing like, one standing here, open shower. One standing here, yeah. open shower, right? Yeah, yeah. Shower etiquette, like you're at a stall. Yeah. Trying to, taking a piss. Man, I stood right in between two of them motherfuckers. I had no idea... <laughs> I thought the other side was broken or some shit because I'm stupid. And, man, they all thought I was weird from that day forward. But, hey, <laughs> you didn't know you what know, to do. You know, <laughs> I, you know, it is what it is, bro. It is what hey, it is. Hey, that's funny. That's funny. You're like, fuck it. <laughs> but it, it brought me down, though, because I, I realized in that moment, like, or even, like, looking back, like, these dudes, they might be worth millions of dollars. They might be on TV and whatever. But after talking with them as much as I have, like, the years to come, they're just normal fucking dudes that are rich as shit. Yeah. Like, there ain't no difference, man. Yeah. There ain't no difference. And I think that that's helped me in streaming too. Yeah, no, because you, you're definitely, uh, you're definitely like a very humble person and like down to earth. Like, but, but I, but that's, that's why you could tell like you've been around it because a lot of people, people who haven't been around it and get a little, you know what I mean? They act the opposite because they think that's yep. how it is. You know what I mean? I'm, I've, uh, I, I, I tell people this all the time, and I talk about it on stream before. The reason why the streaming world, in my opinion, is there's always drama and it's so cutthroat and whatever, all that other good shit. Because in the baseball, in the baseball world, you prepare yourself for it. I've been, and it sounds fucked up, but it's the honest truth. I've been preparing myself to be in the public eye since I was 10 years old. Yeah, yeah. Like, my parents have been preparing me to be a big league baseball player playing on TV in front of thousands and thousands and thousands and of people my entire life. And it didn't work out, but now that I'm streaming and it's somewhat is the same thing, like, it's just, for me, it's like, yeah, I might go live and have five, 6,000 viewers, but at the same time, like, those are just people yeah, like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you. we all just chilling, bro. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I don't look at it as, oh man, I have all these people following me and all these viewers. I'm so fucking cool. 
I don't give a fuck. I think I think that's why you connect with your audience so well because it's like you know you know coming into your stream, it's like chilling with the homies. Exactly. You know? It's not like you're uh, like it's it's you, you that's what I said. You relate you relate to like you know the ground level people, and I yep. think I think your audience relates to you because it's like man, this guy's just like me. He inspires me. He can he can inspire me to do better because I feel like I'm just like him, which is yeah. which is. Which is a a talent within itself, to be honest with you, because not a lot of people can do that. Um, I appreciate that. So, <clears throat> you're 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 pro now. Mm. Uh, what happens? Like, are you are you playing? Are you? Uh... Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what I said. Life is a uh, is a is is a bitch okay yeah and uh and she'll bring you up and, sh and she'll bring you down she got and no mercy no fucking mercy bro like mother nature yeah and uh man I, I i i learned a lot about myself within that time so you know now it's time for the real shit right high school was a fucking dream it was like, like you said, it could be autobiography. You could, I could write a book about it. People could watch it and be like, "Damn, this is amazing." Yeah, right. I want to. I wish that could be my life. Yeah. I get to Pro Ball, and uh, within, I was there for two and a half weeks, feeling good, throwing whatever, and I, I dip. So I, I have a a, a, a nicotine addiction. I've had it since I was 13, 14 years old. I think I took my first dip. And for people who aren't, don't live in the U.S., it's, it's a tobacco that um, it's just tobacco leaves dried up and then soaked in all this other chemicals. Terrible for you. It's linked to mouth cancer and oral cancer of all different kinds. I've lost a tooth to it. Um, but one of these Latin guys, uh, he, he comes up to me. He's like, hey, man, you want to dip? And I'm like, sure. Snap that bitch. Throw it in. Sitting on the field feeling like shit. Bro, what is happening? I find out a couple of days later that this guy did something called double dipping, which is where you put it in your mouth, you take it back out, you throw it in the can, save it for later. I got so fucking sick from him doing that, right? A lot of people don't understand that if you're from different areas of the world, right? It's just like when Columbus came over on the Mayflower and all of the, all these stories about how someone from one area goes to another area and sickness spreads like anything. Yeah, you no know, smallpox, yeah, all yeah, that shit. Yeah, yeah, We're yeah, different. Yeah. People, humans are fucking different. That's why when you migrate to where you're different from. countries, you got to get certain vaccines and exactly. Yeah, yeah. So this this guy, he's from D the Dominican Republic. Now the Dominican Republic, without going into it, I learned a lot from it. I played there for a little bit of time. I was there for summer leagues. The, the Dominican culture and the people in the Dominican are some of the most amazing, humble individuals you'll ever meet. But where they are at is is just, it's a lot dirtier than what we're used to in the U.S. We're, we are fucking lucky, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I had guys on my team who they didn't even know when, the, when they were going to get their next meal when they lived in the Dominican. Yeah. And they just had to grind and grind and grind. And that's why when they get over here, they're so damn good at baseball because they fucking came from nothing. So they worked for everything they've ever gotten in life. Yeah. So again, like there's different sicknesses out there and, and it's a lot dirtier environments over there. So whenever I took that dip, I don't know what the fuck was living in his mouth, but it fucked me up bad. I got a double viral infection in my mouth and in my throat, which basically was like, if the best way I can explain it was I had gotten stung by a thousand bees within my mouth all the way down to like the midsection of my throat Damn. to the point where if I tried to drink water, I would cough it up because it would hurt so bad when I was swallowing it. Damn. So in a span of two and a half weeks, I lost 19 pounds and I couldn't drink. I couldn't eat until i started hiccuping okay i'm telling you this story is 
fucking crazy. Holy I smoke. started I started hiccuping. And I couldn't stop hiccuping. And I I thought it was crazy. I thought I was losing my fucking mind because I was in a hotel room by myself, quarantined, literally plastic on the door because in Pro Ball, you all live in the same hotel. They literally like plastic on the door, caution tape. I was not allowed to leave. They would give me food through my window. Like I'd let down a box with a, with a rope Damn. and I'd pull that fucking box up because they were quarantining the fuck out of me so no one else got sick. And I couldn't, I didn't leave my room for literally a week and a half. I just sat in there. And I had, if I had a doctor come, the doctor would come in a full suit to my fucking room and evaluate me inside of my room. So I didn't have any reason to leave it. Yeah. And I was sitting there and I started hiccuping and I'd hiccup and I'd throw up. I hiccup, I throw up. And I didn't want to call anybody because I thought to myself, how stupid would I look if I called? <laughs> the bats and said, I can't stop hiccuping. Please send somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think I'm gonna die from hiccups. Like, that's literally what it felt like. And I felt like an idiot. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who calls for hiccuping? Well, sure enough, it was because I, I had so much, I was so I lost so much weight and I was so sick that my stomach was swollen from me throwing up so much and it was pushing up against my diaphragm. Jeez. And it wasn't a hiccup, it was like it was my muscles spasming and it created the hiccup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, everything was so fucked up in my stomach. Damn, you was fucked up, dude. I was I was messed up. And, and and remember, I'm 17 at this point, man. I just left my parents. Yeah. You know what I mean? I am a baby, bro. Yeah, like you don't know what's going on. I don't know. So I uh I ended up going to the hospital and uh they put a bunch of shit in me, man, and uh and from that moment on, I just, bro, I, I just kept getting hurt. I come back from from being sick. Your body, my body was weak, but I was young and I was dumb, and I, I was ready to be back. Bro, I was ready. I was like, I, I remember going on the field, and I, we would go through stretches. I'd run from from one stretch to another stretch, and we would go from there was four fields, and while I was running to another field. I would go into the bathroom. I would throw up like four or five times. I'd leave that bathroom, go, and then I'd go throw. Damn. After I get done throwing, we would run to go do PFPs. I'd be running. I see a bathroom, go throw up blood in the bathroom, come out, go to do PFPs. But I just, I wanted, I just, I was young. I, I didn't want to feel, I just missed the first two weeks of my career. And whenever you're young, you feel like that's a lifetime. And, yeah, yeah. you know, you just push through it. It fucked me up. So I ended up tearing my UCL, rehab my UCL two months later, uh, come back. I was sprinting, stepped on a sprinkler, tore my hamstring in half of my right leg. Jesus. Christ. Had to get surgery on that. <clears throat> that took eight months. Come back eight months. At this point, I've now missed a year of my first, my first year of my career. Completely missed. Come back. I was throwing. Uh, I was, I was pitching and, um, I was almost ready to, to start again for my UCL for a second time. Had to get PRP therapy and surgery. Um, I come back from that, played a full year in Columbia, South Carolina with the fireflies in low way. <clears throat> the way pro ball works, it's the ladder. You start at the bottom, you work away to the big leagues. Which yeah, is yeah. Top. I was in low way, which is about like middle to the lower end. Yeah. Had a great had a great year. Was projecting in the in double A and then the big leagues following that year. Um, then we're in spring training, and I'm fucking training. And they're like, "We want to take you because I throw I threw from like three quarters." Yeah. They wanted me to throw up top because I could create more velocity. They were right. I threw 102, Jeez. but I blew my shoulder out the third time I did it. <clears throat> I blew my shoulder out, tore my labrum, tore my rotator cuff. Uh, while I was about to start rehab, I got scope done and then I got a PRP injection and all this other shit. I, we hear this weird fucking thing called, uh, COVID like who we, no one knew what the fuck that was. Yeah. Yeah. So we're like, what the fuck is COVID? Like, that's no big deal. Like whatever. Little did I, little did we fucking know, man, <laughs> it was going to shut us down for an entire year. Dude, I can't. 
My mouth is so dry for no reason. So uh, COVID hits. I just had surgery. And I can't rehab. I can't train. I can't do anything. So I just sat in my room four months with that cast on, not getting rehab. And I don't know if you've ever had an injury, but one of the best things when it comes to injuries is the sooner you don't move it, the longer you can't move it. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Facts. You don't move it, you lose it. Yeah, yeah. So I had my my shit locked up for too long. And that 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 off season, I just got fucked. I couldn't <clears throat> I couldn't train. I couldn't lift. I couldn't do shit. I just sat there and I was fucked. Came back. They, the Mets could sense that my arm was still fucked up and they released me. Oh my gosh, I didn't even know it was that deep. So yeah. what like what's what's going like what's going on in your head at this point now? Like your your dreams, your goals, all the shit you worked hard for, like pretty much your whole life. Well <clears throat> it the the thing so if we fast or we we go back a little bit within this time, I I got introduced to No Pixel, right? I started oh, so, streaming. So and, you're streaming during this time, like I'm streaming during this time. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So my second year in Pro Bowl, uh, when I was rehabbing my UCL, <clears throat> Summit, uh, I hit Summit up, Summit One G, and I. Well, said, how did you meet Summit though? How did that like? Cause I know so you said initially, Fortnite. yeah. So initially, I messaged him and. Basically, I told him who I was. I was like, do you want to play some time? Because again, like, now that I'm a streamer, I understand it's a little different, right? Yeah. Like, asking... A lot of viewers don't understand, like, asking us to play, it's not the fact that we don't want to play with you <clears throat> or we don't want to play with you on stream. It's just the amount of people who message us is fucking absurd. Yeah. And I can only imagine how many message him, right? Um... And when it comes to being on stream, another thing you have to realize is, is that when someone plays with you or invites you and plays with you or whatever, and let's say you invite the wrong person, they say some shit on yeah. your stream that you invited, that you encourage for people to go follow. And or if you bring them into like the Twitch space <clears throat> and then they're labeled or they do something fucked up, that goes on you yeah. too. It's definitely a like, vet. It, you got to definitely vet the right people. That's exactly. Yeah. I understand. And I know that now. Yeah. So I asked him to play. We play. And, uh, you know, we, it was so is whatever. This, a, we, is this your first time playing with him? Your first time, your mm -hmm. first conversation. So you hit yep. him up and he was like, yeah, yeah, come through. Yep. I hit him up. He's like, yeah, yeah, come through. We play. We tear it up. We do well. And, uh, didn't talk to him after that. <clears throat> but I made friends with Blue. Yeah. Which you probably know who Blue is. Mm -hmm. For those who Rest are in watching, peace, Blue. Rest in peace. RIP, uh, Blue passed away a couple years ago. And uh, I met Blue in his chat, and me and Blue became friends. And when Jared started playing No Pixel, Blue hits me up. He was like, hey, you should come and play too. There's no like professional athletes on on no pixel i feel i feel like you'd have a lot of fun <clears throat> i could get you hooked up with honathan and coil you just need to reach out and i was like okay so i reach out to them um they give me prio and all that good jazz at this point like there was 32 people in the server at a time so is this <coughs> this is 2.0 now right this is early early Ours, early 2.0 yeah. this is like this is like Mr. Chang, like, this is early, early, early. Like, we're talking Rami usually had, like, maybe a thousand viewers, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, early, 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 early. So I go and I do that. But I, I didn't want to, you know, go and chase somebody down. So I just went and did my old thing, right? Yeah. Although I joined typically to go and hang out with everybody including jared or summit i wasn't going to go out of my way and you know just fucking find them and on top of that i 
you know, when it comes to RP, I knew how it worked. I RP'd in Arma whenever I was younger and whatever. But I didn't want to stream snipe or anything like that. So I just did my own thing. Yeah. And I didn't tell anybody who I was, didn't tell anybody. I was in no pixels community for over for almost two years without anyone knowing I played professional sports the entire time. That is crazy. But Summit knew, right? Summit didn't even know I was in the server. Never told him. Damn. Mm-hmm. I didn't want I didn't want special treatment, man. Yeah, like yeah. I when I was a professional athlete, like when we would go out, we'd go to like if I went anywhere, people would ask for pictures or signatures and stuff like that. But whenever I was I played no pixel, people treated me like shit. Yeah, and I, yeah. I loved it. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's fucked up as that sounds. <clears throat> Back then, if people didn't know who you were, bro, I walked in the south side, I'd get fucking robbed instantly yeah. every single time. So I'd start getting, I'd be like, I'm going to fuck you up next time I see you, bro. <laughs> and then I'd go up north and then I'd get fucking robbed up there too. Yeah, and yeah, it was just yeah, like, yeah. God damn it. I can't catch a break. But I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. I fucking loved it. I loved having to like build myself up. It hell was, yeah. Hell yeah. It was cool. And then, so, uh, so now when do you, so when do you link, you're, you're, you've been in the server, Summit mm. doesn't know, when do you link with Summit? And like, I'm sure when he found out you've been in the server and didn't tell him, he was kind of like, what the fuck? He didn't even fucking remember me. Oh, he didn't? <laughs> no, hell no. Oh, no, man. Shit. I, listen, that man stretches too much. I don't even think he fucking remembered who I was, to be honest. I mean, he says he does, but Jared's a fucking liar. I don't think he remembers it. Um, no, nah, man. I mean, it wasn't even like I ran into him and I was like, hey, you remember me or whatever. Like, I legitimately, like... It was more like I knew him. He had no idea who who I was at the time, and <clears throat> my aspirations weren't wasn't never to like go and find him and and to like you know be his best friend. It was never like that. It was just like Blue and invited me to come play on a server that he was also on, and yeah. I was like, sure. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't want to go out of my way, and at the time, I'm gonna be honest, <clears throat> and I'm gonna be I might make some people salty saying this. There was already too many fucking people just appearing on his shit. Every single day I'd watch the same people like just show up in the most random ways. I'm yeah. like, that motherfucker stream sniping, yeah, you yeah. know? Like, I don't want to be that guy. That, I've never been that's, that guy. That's how I feel with like, um, when I like, that's why, I, like, even with CG, like, the boys fuck with me, but I just don't like being around because it's like, yep. you see everybody trying to come around, trying to get in. I'm just like, yep. yo, like, yo, if they hit me, like, if it's natural, then yeah, but I'm not trying to be around like that. Cause I, 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 it's just not me. I'm not, I'm not a clout chaser. You know what I mean? Like, and that was, and that was, that was a hundred percent me, bro. That's just how <clears throat> I wasn't there for it. I never wanted to be a streamer. Like that wasn't my intentions. Yeah. This. You was just, you was just chilling, doing your thing. It, I was just enjoying being fucked with. Like it was like, so did you, you know. did you start streaming at this point now or? Um, so I played in the, the server for about. I mean, you got to remember, I was in Pro Bowl, so I was, I'm living in a fucking hotel. Yeah. You're... I don't got the internet to stream, you know? Mm -hmm. So I finished that first year in that off season, I start streaming. Uh, and, you know, I was playing shit like I played a little bit of Fortnite and a little bit of GTA and whatever. I was maybe getting like eight, nine, ten viewers if I was lucky. Yeah. Uh, then I linked up with OTT. LAG TV Maximus, you know who he is. Yeah, shout out OTT. Uh, shout out OTT. <clears throat> he was the first one who gave me a shot, bro. That's and it wasn't up. even, it wasn't even like, I didn't even deserve it. I lied straight to his fucking face to get the shot <laughs> that he gave me. So RP storyline, there was a a, a, a a gang called the Aztecas. Aztecas, okay? yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They held down what BSK does now. And... I was getting fucked with by this girl named Violet by the Aztecas every fucking day. Shout out to Violet. Fuck you. I still hate you. <laughs> um, she would rob my ass. And she'd be like, hello, puppy. And then she'd fucking rob me. Yeah. So I was like going after her every day. Like my goal. I'm a professional athlete, yeah. but I am losing sleep over this <laughs> Violet son of a bitch, yeah, bro. Yeah, like yeah. I wanted to get her every day. So I fucking would wake up with the only intentions of robbing her bitch ass and yeah. getting back at her. But I would always fail and she would fucking shoot my shit up. And uh, 
I go to, to the block to look for, and this random dude, like, starts, you know, just shooting the shit with me. And I was like, you're an Azteca? And he's like, hell yeah. And I was like, who the fuck is this violet bitch? And he was like, I don't know, bro. You want to be an Azteca? And I said, fuck yeah. Little did I know, this guy wasn't even Azteca. He was, it was his first day on the server, and he was just saying that he was. Yeah. So then OTT comes out of the fucking blue, shoots us up. We negotiate a deal for Azteca, the gang, when neither of us were Aztecas. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and we took the pawn shop. And then on top of that, the Vagos then give us the pawn shop. So OTT, Vagos, and Aztecas, everyone thinks that we're like the OGs. We are nobodies. Yeah. Not even Literally in Aztecas. Nobodies. Not even in the yeah. Aztecas. And then. OTT's like, fuck the Aztecas. How about you join us, take the colors off, we'll go to war against the Aztecas, and we'll take the pawn shop. So what? I was like, this is a dream. <laughs> like, I'm not even in the Aztecas. Yeah. I'll probably die tomorrow by yeah, them. Yeah. Shoot me up. I was like, deal. So sure enough, we I fucking join up with OTT. We go to war with the Aztecas. We beat the fuck out of them. We take the pawn shop. And that's that's, that's gangsta. how that story went. Yeah. So what crew was, what crew was this uh, at the time? Misfits. The Misfits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Misfits. Um, my I, character back then was called Hutch too. I knew. I knew a guy. He was. What was his name? Um. Man, he was in Misfits. He he told me he told me he was in Misfits back in the day, but he got banned because I think Ivan. Had, Ivan. Yeah. Ivan. Ivan. Yeah. Yeah. Crosshair yeah. Ivan, Crosshair baby. Crosshair Ivan. Yeah. Dumbass. Um, Ivan, Ivan was cool. He was um, like the first server I got into. Uh, that's where I met him, and we didn't yeah. like each other at the time, so I didn't know nothing about like no pixel and stuff. But he would like gotcha. people would call him Crosshair Ivan. Like, what the fuck mm. does that mean, right? So that shit followed him, and then we met um, remember uh, Zombie Zombie Barricades. I know ZB. Yeah, ZB. So ZB said it to him too in one server we was in, and I'm like, and then like people was like telling me he used crosshair no pixel or some shit like that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so now you're in Azteca. No, you're in uh, Misfits with OTT, yeah. and so I'm assu I'm assuming at this point your your stream is like blowing up. No, no, no. fifty oh. maybe. F I mean. At the very top, at the peak amount of numbers, I would get maybe 50, 50 viewers when OTT wasn't live. Yeah. Um, and then <clears throat> if he was live, I'd get maybe like 10, 12 viewers still. Okay, okay. Nothing too crazy. Um, so when, did when the... we went, when we were at war with people, that's whenever I got viewers. Yeah. So Everyone the... thought I cheated. Because you, you was good. You know, that's the thing. When you're no pixel, right? They Like, you know, the, the viewership is so like... Like they're like, yo, you, you can you can um you can uh track someone and they be like, you know, I see people in comms, oh this guy's cheating, this guy's cheating. It's like, come on, bro. Oh yeah, I, I've been accused of like I s I've been accused of everything. So where like, you know, fifty viewers is still a lot of viewers, right? Of course. Well, obviously compared to you now, no. But where <laughs> where was where did you feel like the Cause you know, with war, you get a lot of viewers, and then they just dip. So it's like I, I don't like that. Uh, uh, it's not like I would say like, you know, your viewers. It's just like people there for the drama. Oh, um, it's like I, I'd say it all the time. It's like it's literally, it's like jacking off, man. Like that's what war is like, bro. You get all the way to the peak, yeah, and then once it's over, it's just fucking over. Yeah. And then, then there's you're like you're looking back and like, damn, did I just fucking do that shit. Yeah. All right, fuck it, whatever. That's what it's like. So when did you start like becoming like when did you start like uh you know getting the the viewership and and building this like this kind of cult following fan base you have now when did that happen? um so whenever I joined I so I permit Hutch I joined the Ballas or I'm sorry I I make a new character called uh, Drew which is uh literally the same thing happened like meet zb whenever he was in opixel yeah. we make the the ballas together we yeah. go to war with every fucking crew in the city yeah you know uh we take over that then bunch of shit happens he gets banned cg 
goes against us, takes all of our shit, and uh, and then I I perma dead eye. Well, with, within that time frame, we started playing Among Us. Right, Among Us comes out. Yeah. Jobless Garrett hits me up and he's like, "Yo, do you want to come play uh, Among Us?" And he he told everybody he's like, "Yeah, it's gonna be." Me, because at that point I start hanging out with the boys. They call me for jobs and shit like that. And you know, word gets out there who I am, and people are you know being cool with me and shit. Yeah. Um. And I've been part of the server at this point over a year, so people are you know they they know who I am. Um. Garrett hits me up. He's like, "You want to play Among Us? It's gonna be myself, Rami, Summit, and all these other people." I was like, "Sure." So we went and played Among Us, and me and Jared are just fucking going at it the entire time. Like any time he got the imposter, he fucking murk me the second he had a chance. Even if it damned him, he would still do it. So I started doing it to him. And then every every other day, we would start doing it. And and we would start playing among us. And we would, me and him were just going at it like the entire fucking time. Like, you're fucking wrong. You're this. Uh, No, you're the fucking wrong one. (laughs) And we just meshed really well. And um, his girl, Caroline, she played Among Us with us, too. And I meshed really well with her, too. Like, and Smokey, who was his head mod, and his right hand, I meshed really well with him, too. Like, the whole the whole crew, we just, we all became really good friends. So every single time we we play Among Us, um, you know, I ended up starting to set it up. So I'd hit him up, and that's whenever we started having conversations. And I'd get everybody together get all the boys together and I started running the lobbies. Um, and that I started building a viewer base off of that. At this point, I'm like 150, 200 viewers. Whenever we play among us, I'd get like three, 400 viewers because again, I would just, I'm, I'm a shit stir. You know, this. Yeah, yeah. I, so like pe- people, are, people are learning your personality. and like, oh, I fuck with this guy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we did that. Um, and then, you keep going forward in time. The drama with East Side happens. I end up perming my that I drew character. Um, and then I didn't know what to do. I was kind of sitting there and I just permed the character. I'm in Pro Ball. Uh, the Among Us lobbies kind of die out. And one day I see, you know, something happen and, and Jared was fucking pissed and no pixel. And he was like, I'm just going to go play PUBG like I'm over it. Yeah. And I hit him up. I'm like, yo, man, you want to play? Um, uh, PUBG, I'm fucking like I'm over no pixel too, and I just I'm just trying to chill. And he's like, yeah, I can play, and we've been playing every day with each other for the last two and a half years. That's crazy. And so you guys just basically built this like close friendship, yeah. Um, um, which obviously everybody sees, but it's it's crazy to see how it formulated. Like, because you knew him prior, mm. had a like you know, and then it's like. You guys didn't talk for a while, and then you guys, it's kind of kind of like, let's just pretty much say it was meant to be, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, we just mesh, like, <clears throat> we mesh really well. We're the same kind of person. We like the same things. Yeah. Uh, except, you know, he's five foot four and a hobbit, <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm a giant. <laughs> Shout out to Summit. Shout out to Summit. <laughs> so, you know, you've always been, you know, I, I've seen like, you know, YouTube videos and stuff like that. You've been, you've always been um, very outspoken. You've always mm. said what's on your mind. You, you've, you, you're you one of the people in No Pixel that has no filter. And yep. I think, I, 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 I think, and I believe everybody can respect that, right? Because <laughs> yeah. a lot of, a lot of people, uh, you know, they won't say anything, but you're, you know, you're throwing the, the guns at the wall like I don't give a fuck, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, um, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, also, it's good because, you know, you, 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 you know, you, you people respect it because you, you say things that, you know, need to be said and, you know, so, and sometimes it makes a difference, right? Yeah. Has, has that, um, has that ever got you in, in trouble? Oh, all the fucking time, man. <laughs> Are you kidding me, dude? All the time. I, just I like, got I'll trouble. be the sacrifice. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, I don't, dude, it's, I, I've always been that way, man. Yeah. Like, I've, dude, in, in fucking high school and in, in pro ball and gaming, like, 
all of it. I, I've I've never been different than this. I I can tell you story after story about me just opening up my big fucking mouth and getting just in trouble for it. You know, and, and like you you did say um you said this um you was telling me this in game. You're like um I've been banned fifteen times. Yeah, <laughs> I have I have the record. I have you the have most the, you have the bands. Record. I have the most bands, more than XQC, more than anyone else in the server. I have the most bands without being permanently banned in No Pixel history. That is insane. Well, I guess they all love Hutch, regardless. You know what I mean? <laughs> they, they definitely know the value you bring. Um, yeah. It's um, it's you know like I see sometimes you do take like long breaks though. Like uh, yeah. you, you know you you don't take like a week. You'll take like three four months. Mm -hmm. is is there a reason for that is that like uh you know you just kind of you know need to like decompress or i mean there's there's always there's always a a reason um at the end of the day like i consider you know me and some have been playing together now for two and a half years we've been streaming together we stream every game together no matter what it is we'll play it um and we we're the same thing like Sometimes I'll play a game he doesn't want to fucking play and we'll we'll play different games. But at one point, like it's like it's like having a brother, you know, like I want to go and hang out with my bro. I, yeah. I want to go hang out with my family like that is my blood. I do anything for him, you know, um, same thing goes for Caroline. Same thing goes for Smokey. Same thing that goes for Judd like that. We're like our own family within when you think of Twitch and you think of like teams and yeah. communities like OTK and whatever. We have our own thing. We just don't put a name on it. Yeah. But we're yeah. family. Yeah. You know? Um, so we'll sit there and like, for example, he was playing Rust. I fucking man, if you play Rust, you're watching this, <laughs> fuck you, okay? I hate that game, man. Fuck that game. Yeah. He was playing that game and I tried to play it like four or five times. I hated it, but I, I would keep trying to play it yeah. and enjoy it just to hang out with my boy. Um and we played Tarkov together. Uh, when it comes to my stream, that's what was the most beneficial thing to my stream ever. Uh, that's what solidified me as a full-time streamer was Tarkov. Nice. I went from being, you know, when me and a lot of people think because I play with Summit, my viewer count instantly went up. That's the first thing people think. The first thing people always say is like, when whenever I get called a clout chaser or whatever, and they don't know the full story, the full context, the first thing they say is, you you're you're a successful streamer because of summit which in like hindsight i'm not a fucking idiot i will call it out like i see it a hundred percent being friends with summit like yes he helps me out a ton and he does it on purpose yeah. there will be times where we've had conversations where my viewer count will go lower and he'll raid me just to give me a just to help me out or to whatever because he's a good friend yeah but that was never the intentions and he knows that yeah and yeah. in this industry like you know and like everyone else know that is a rare thing to have a super, genuine super, super. to have a genuine relationship with an individuals or individuals like a part of your group that you truly don't give a fuck about any of the money, any of the fucking like viewer counts or all that shit. You're just boys. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. And, and I, with he my, genuinely I could tell he genu genuinely appreciates that. You could tell. Yeah, and, yeah. and Judd's the same way. It's yeah. not just me. I mean, fucking <laughs> Judd, man, like Judd is the exact, he's the more extreme version of me in that sense. Like he doesn't give a shit yeah. about any of it. Yeah. And you that's why he meshes so yeah. well with yeah. us, you know? He's just chilling. He's out. He's like, yeah, I'm vibing. Exactly. He doesn't give a fuck, man. And and neither do I. And uh, in a sense, neither does Jared. Jared ran into this fucking head first. I mean, how can he not with that big old dome of his? Um but like he's just so OG that he just kind of was in it when he needed to be and and just locked it down. And he's such a, a cool guy and all that other good jazz without sucking him off too much that he uh it worked out for him, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. But when I first started playing with him, my viewer count fucking just went straight down. <laughs> because a lot of people don't understand when you play variety games, it doesn't matter who you're playing with. Yeah. Like your viewer count's going down, period. So whenever I went to PUBG and started playing PUBG with Jared, I was at three, 400 viewers. I went down to like 40, 50 viewers. Mm. Then we started playing dead games and God forbid I was lucky to have seven, eight <laughs> viewers. Like, you know, 
it was fucking awful. Like we, I remember we played like Planet Side. I had like 15 viewers, man. Jeez. And I was like five, you know, two, three weeks ago, I had 500 viewers. Now I'm at 17. Like, but I realized, and again, you go through that growing pains, you realize why it happens, what goes on and how the Twitch algorithm works. You realize how viewers at the end of the day, it's the same thing anywhere. If Summit is streaming and you watch Summit, you're going to go watch Jared. Like, yeah, that's just what you're going to do. You're going to go watch him. He's entertaining. He's one of the best. So, in turn, if you're going to play with someone like Jared or whatever, but you still want to grow your own stream, you got to think about starting a little bit earlier before he starts streaming. And then when he gets on, you got to put the same amount of time in. Because yeah. the, the biggest problem, and I know I'm getting into the business side of Twitch or whatever, the biggest problem, it isn't about clout chasing. It isn't about egos. It isn't about like anything more than just at the end of the day, you're trying to grow your channel. Yeah. And, yeah. And I'm talking to anyone out here who's a streamer, yourself, anybody who needs this kind of answer. You're trying to grow your channel. It is okay to recognize how to grow your channel and to do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What is not okay is to start doing it let it fucking control your entire stream and then to completely push away or to push back the people who helped you even get to that fucking point. 100%, you know? Yeah. Like I could, if I wanted to start at fucking 5 a.m., 6 a.m., right when Jared gets off, stream from 5 a.m. all the way to 5 p.m., right when he gets off, instantly get off and go to sleep and wait for him to like you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah like yeah. that but that's fucked yeah that's, that's, fucked. that's, that's fucked you don't yeah, do that yeah, shit yeah. and the people who do do that shit and everyone has seen them everyone knows who they are all they care about is that number on on the viewer count yeah. that's all they fucking it, care it, about it, when it, it doesn't matter yeah it does it definitely can get to you right um yeah but like you said it's 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 uh you know i always say the humble the humble ones always win it's it's, yep. it's it, you know it's it's the end game it's not it's yep. not about right now but yeah a lot of people do stuff for viewers and stuff and um like you said everybody can see it so i don't i don't feel like it comes off as genuine you know yeah see when a motherfucker's not genuine you know exactly so exactly where 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 what is your um you know you you mentioned talk off right like you mm -hmm. really start you really start popping off on talk off so you've you've kind of built your career now as a variety streamer which, yep. it, which is very powerful, mm -hmm. very powerful. You're not relying on a source. Yeah. Um, where is your, like, what's your, what's your future plans? Like, um, without elaborating too much, like, where do you, where do you, where do you kind of want to go from where you at now? Like, what's the next level for you? Um, I mean, it's, we go back to the baseball stuff. Like my dad, you know, he instilled in me, like, no matter how far, that's the one thing that I am plagued with in my life is that no matter how successful I get, I'm never going to be like, I'm I'm never going to be happy. I'm never going to be content with it. You know what I mean? That's just how I, that's just how I am. I remember being, you know, sitting there with, with 50 to a hundred viewers and being like, man, if I could just get a thousand concurrent viewers, I think I'd be happy with that. Yeah. Then I started getting a thousand, and I'm like, man, if I could just get like two, three of these, uh, two, three thousand, I'd be happy <laughs> two, with three that. Of these, then good. I start, and I start getting two to three, and I'm like, man, ten sounds like it's really <laughs> nice, you know? Like you just keep wanting to build, you keep wanting to get bigger and larger, and you keep wanting to progress yourself and your stream, and you you just want to be as successful. I want to be as successful as I as I can in this lifetime, and I don't think, and you know. That's a problem, you know. No, I think not. I'm thankful for where I'm at. I'm thankful for being able to, you know, when I was in Pro Bowl, I like I blew all my money so quick. I I was a lot of people don't know this. I was a janitor at one point in my life. Damn. Like I was a professional athlete. What I would do during COVID was I would go to a gym, I'd clean the gym, wash towels, wash toilets, wash the gym, uh, you know, the workout equipment. Yeah. And in turn, they would train me for two hours with the best of the best elite training individuals there for free. And that's how, that's that's, how I was that's, able to that's, do it. That's really getting it out in the mud. And on top of that, I would get home. I would go there. I would stream or I would work there from 6 a.m. to about 8 to 9 p.m. 
and I would stream on the weekends so I can make a little extra money. See, like that's this this is why I like these things because people don't understand. Like people want to like shit handed to them. Like you're you're you're, you're at this you're at this time you're pro and you're still like yo let me let me go work here let me get the best of the best and that yep. that's a humble person because a lot of people can't do that. Like oh I've achieved this like I should be at this level. And yeah and to reflect on what you said was like like I don't think I'll ever be like ever be like not you didn't say happy but like i don't think it will ever be enough and i think mm. that's okay uh and as long as you like have gratitude on the way like yo i'm i'm grateful because exactly. that's part of your journey but i i think yep. that's okay i think people always have this like um i was reading this book uh f uh 50 cents book it's called um like hustle by something like it's like he, he talked he was like he realized that there's no light at the end of the tunnel. It yep. just keeps going. And he's yep. like, once you understand that, you'll be okay with it. Like, you yep. know what I mean? It's not like, oh, I get to here and it's, whew, made it, guys. Mm -hmm. I'm at the top. It's like, nah, there's there's no light. And you should be okay with there's no light at the end of the tunnel. No, and 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 that's, um, and I 100% agree with that. Sorry, my girl's checking on me. No, she's, not, she's not seeing that I'm not live right now, <laughs> so she's freaking out. That, that, that. Um, what were you gonna say? Sorry, that's a good girl right there, <laughs> babe. What's going on? Get back, yeah. hustle. Yeah, why well, is she working right now? <laughs> uh, but um, but yeah, I mean, and and I think, like you said, there's just nothing wrong with it. The pro, the part where, the the hardest part of streaming, for myself and for every fucking streamer out there, number one is the toxicity. Like, it, listen, I say it to people all the time. I am one of the most hated and I'm the, one of the most loved, but also hated individuals in no pixel. Okay. Pretty sure that's safe to say. Um, I, I've, I've, I've gotten death threats, man. If I had, if I could have a piece of paper for every time a <laughs> death threat email or a message or a discord message or a Twitch message came in, bro, yeah. it's stacked to the ceiling. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I get that shit all the time. I'm because I'm so outspoken, right? Yeah, yeah. Dealing with that is is a difficult for me. I don't give a fuck. At the end of the day, listen, man. Unless you sneak up from behind me, you're at least gonna have a hard time. <laughs> <And> like, <laughs> a very hard uh, time. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna yeah. have a hard time. Yeah. You better sneak up behind me yeah. and not let me see you coming. Yeah. You know. Um. And then number two is is. Like, like we talked about before, the growing pains, man. Like, if you're a no pixel streamer and you plan on leaving no pixel and going and doing variety, I don't care who the fuck you are, you are losing 70 to 90% of your viewers. Like that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you have 20,000 viewers. Doesn't matter if you have 20 viewers. The moment you leave no pixel and go stream anything else, you're going to lose viewers because it's like a TV show. You're watching. The office or um you know my for example my mom watches days of our lives yeah. okay you know what that is yeah yeah i can't believe that show's still on exactly yeah, yeah. why are, why yeah. do they why does my mom watch it yeah. because since she was seven years old she could turn on the tv every single day and be able to watch that shit and it's there yeah it's part of her routine streaming's the same thing no pixels the same thing it might be old. It might have been around for years now, but the viewers watch that shit like it's days of our lives. They're conditioned. They they're following the story and they're conditioned to want to know what's next and to not miss out on it. it, it and and what you say is a hundred percent true. And that's why I said like you've been able to brand yourself outside of No Pixel. Yeah. Where oh I'm gonna go do play this game and you'll probably have more viewers. You know what I mean? Yep. And um. Uh, that is a very hard thing to do. And I think people kind of get scared of like, you know, I want to do this, but, I, you know, I'm going to lose it. But, you know, I always say to people, you got to take that risk regardless and, you know, brand yourself. But that's and that's what I'm talking about. Like, that is the growing pains. And that's why I tell people, like, don't be afraid. To take the viewer hit. Yeah. If it, like, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You're going to have months where you might not make as much money as you did before. You might have months where you make two, 
you know, or three times less money that you've made before. You know what I mean? And you might go from a thousand viewers to 200 viewers. But the reality is, is I would take 500 viewers that enjoy me and are part of my community. Yeah. Not just my no pixel stream. Yeah. I'm talking 500 people who are legitimately my community and my boys and my family. Um, rather than 3,000 RP viewers who will just leave the second that something <laughs> happens, that happens in character and I don't want to play the game anymore. Yeah. You know? No, nah, that, that, that's that's like, uh, that's a, that's the, that's a big gem that you're saying right there. And, uh, you know, hopefully people, like you said, hopefully people do take that risk just to, if the, you know, if they want to be the, the streamer they desire to be, you know? Yeah. And, um, uh, I don't want to keep you too long because I, I know you got to get back. Oh, let's, bro, I'm chilling. You let's, know me. Let's, uh, let's, let's touch on the music, man. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, uh, you know, recently you got into the music. How is that making you feel? I feel like he, I feel like I get this sense, like you're really inspired. Like you're like, you've got this like fire right now. Are you enjoying it? Bro, it's, it's fucking dope, man. Like. I remember whenever I first joined the the server and I listened to OTT's music for the first time. Yeah. And like listening to his music back then, it was like uh, the speedy nose through yeah, the bar, yeah, you know, that one. Yeah. And I was like, dude, people make music like this. Like, yeah. This is crazy. Like this is heat. Um, I've always been interested from it, but I've never like actually wanted to get in on it because I just didn't have the confidence, you know? Um, one of the things I did whenever I was younger is I actually did, I uh, acted. I was doing acting. Uh, whenever I was in elementary school, actually, I did acting. And we I went on Broadway with it for Beauty and the Beast and nice. all kinds of shit. Um, but my dad was like, I mean, and not to offend anybody, you got to realize I'm from Kentucky. My yeah. dad's a redneck or whatever. Yeah. He's like, get that pussy shit out of yeah, here. Yeah, like, yeah. let's go fucking get on the football field, yeah. you know? Um, so, you know, I, I've always been able to do, you know, a little bit of it, but... Um, but nah, man, I just, I like, bro, I listen to your music and I list, like, I see the boys doing it and I'm like, dude, if they can do it, I can, I can fucking do it, you know? 100%. Yeah. I, and yeah. um, um, like I said, um, the songs you're putting out are like, they're really good, man. And they're not just like good, like, oh, no pixel good. Like, I fuck with it, like a lot. I appreciate and, and that, I, bro. I think you got a, a lot of potential to, uh, and this is you just like, yo, my third song, fourth song. You know, imagine 15 20 songs deep where you like oh i understand where i can go i understand my voice like you're, you're gonna be an animal bro so yeah i uh i that's one of my big i don't know my range at all like i i try i'm trying to i think our the our most our latest song that we made that, i definitely think i'm starting to recognize that, it that's what i'm saying bit. that's you right there and you yeah. know it's like like even for me like one summer like i i just like um you know my engineer he's like my engineer producer like he's very hard on me right so mm -hmm. um he was just like yo i'm sending you 100 beats do 100 songs and like <laughs> we, we did 100 songs that summer like 100 songs holy and shit do them all the way because it was just kind of like you know that uh you know that the 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 tap analogy like yeah or the dirt and then eventually you get all the dirt out of the tap it runs clean it's mm. it was just that it was just like you know, that's why I can make someone sends me a beat. I'll send them back a hook in 30 minutes. You know, I can just. Yeah, I remember I sent you mine and then you sent it back. Yeah. And I listened to it. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Just, like, I thought I was good. He just said, this is harsh, bro. This is nasty. It's, it's, it's really good. It's just, uh, you know, it's just the uh, it's just. But, you know, it's like it's, it's it's I've always I've always been taught like. The word try with that action in itself is mm. you telling yourself, I'm trying. The word do is it's done. So it's yep. just get it, get her done. You know what I mean? That's what they say. Get Absolutely. her done. They don't say get her try. fucking done. Yeah, get her done. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. So that's always been the mentality. And, 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 you know, and because I've had such a long time off of no pixel, like now I'm back. I'm just like, bro, like I'm, I, I'm making myself a staple in this server. Like there's no, you know what I mean? Fuck so, yeah. But like I, I mean, and and you're doing it the right way. Like yeah. as someone who is one of the staples, uh like it's it doesn't take anything like for me, I feel like what made me a staple was 
I wasn't afraid to do what other people were were afraid of. Like you look at all the big the big individuals in, in No Pixel, right? We name them off: Rami, Randy, Vinny, K, Buddha, Tony. All these guys. What do they all have in common? They've never permitted their characters. Mm-hmm. I've permitted three, and all three of the characters were fucking like big time characters. Top dogs. You know, yeah. Dead Eye Drew was like. A huge character among all RP servers, like a lot of people. I, I probably got five, six, seven different, uh, or not that, probably more than that. But people asking, like, "Hey, can I play your character in this RP server, that RP server?" Just because he was a big character. All the boys had that. There's a hundred different Ramis out there. I guarantee you, or a bunch of Langs and a bunch of Yous or Mees. Yeah. Um, but I didn't care about any of that. Like, I truly respected the RP and the storyline, and I just fucking said, "I'm willing to give up." All the cool cars, six, seven, eight months of work. Yeah, for the for the RP. I'm, yeah, I'm when you when you when you permit Hutch, I was like, because I was watching on YouTube, I was like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Well, oh I, yeah. I, but the storyline, I, I I love the storyline, but I was like, yo, this guy is like a risk taker. He's edgy, and yo, yeah. that's what that's what the shit needs. Like, yo, I don't and like like you know, I could come to you with an idea, and you're like, fuck it, let's do it. Like you just always been the guy that's just like, yo, the edgy guy, which is yep. which which is great. And like you said, that uh, people respect it, and 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 you're you're a staple because it's like fuck, Hutch doesn't give a fuck. No, you you and and I try and do it on both sides. If I'm playing cop, I'm playing Grim. Like, you want to do something crazy that might get us banned? Let's fucking. Oh, I'll go oh, first. I'm staying away from that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go first. I, like, don't get me wrong. At the end of the day, like, there's rules and stuff like that, and <laughs> we're not going to cross that line. But if we're Sorry. if we're going to do something, now you're good. I'm doing the same thing. Um, but if we're going to get close to that line, you know what I mean? Like, hey, as long as it's not affecting other yeah, people yeah. in a negative way, who gives a fuck? Yeah. And uh, you know, I. Some people can get away with that, like me, a little bit, a little bit more. You, you, yeah, you. you. <laughs> but yo, Hutch, yeah, I appreciate you, boss. Uh, I appreciate you. Um, this was a, a very good. This was actually the longest interview, actually. Really, the longest one, because everyone I was can like, talk, man. Everyone was like, but your story is so intrigued, and a lot of the shit I didn't know. So I know mu- a bunch of motherfuckers don't know. So, yeah. uh, um, man, this is this this is uh. Truly inspiring and truly like uh, learning, like all, all the shit you've been through, all like the downs, and you still yeah. get back up and uh, you know uh, achieve greatness, which is uh, not a lot of people can say that, you know. Yeah. So uh, I definitely appreciate who you are, the human being you became, and you grew to be, um, and and remaining humble. And um, I'm just so thankful to even have this interview. And be able to have the one on one with Hutch and like you know I what I mean? That, like I, I I fuck with it, man. So yeah, we're not gonna keep you too long. I appreciate nah, it. You're all good. Um guys, Thanks, man. make sure you like and subscribe. Um and if you uh you know, if you have any questions, put it in the comments. Um, um, you know, if you want a part two, let us know. And uh yeah. Let us know, man. We appreciate you. <laughs> Much love, dudes. Appreciate y'all.